one of the most famous mathematical artifacts of all time. It looks like this, and it is called Plimpton 322. Someone named Plimpton found a whole bunch of tablets and numbered them, and then when they later went to study them, uh, this one, which was number 322, had a very mathematically interesting thing on it. This tablet is a very small tablet. It's only about maybe four inches wide. So it's a really small thing, but it has very important math in it. Um, the math, well, let me show you. Uh, here's sort of an inverted, sort of hand-drawn copy of it. Of interest are the numbers in these two columns. These over here are just the column numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, up to 15. Um, if you look carefully at this one, uh, that number in base 60 is 0159, otherwise known as 119. Now, if I look at this one carefully, I see those two upright ones, so 0, 02. And then I have these four diagonal ones and nine upright ones, 0, 0249, which is 169. If I do that for all 30 numbers in here, they end up looking like these numbers. And some are large and some are small. But the thing that they all have in common has to do, and the reason why this is considered to be such a famous and important one, uh, tablet, is because it's related to something that are now called Pythagorean triples. A Pythagorean triple most famous Pythagorean triple is 3, 4, 5. And what's special about 3, 4, 5 is that if I take 3 squared and add it to 4 squared, I get 9 plus 16, which is 25, which itself is a perfect square. It's somewhat unusual to be able to have this happen, although you could take 3, 4, 5 and double everything if you double all the numbers in a Pythagorean triple. 6 squared plus 8 squared is 100 which is 10 squared, and I can multiply by the 3, 4, 5 by any number and get a Pythagorean triple. But those, these are all kind of like in the same family. They're all in like the, the 3, 4, 5 family. A Pythagorean triple like 3, 4, 5 is called a primitive Pythagorean triple because they can't be reduced. There's no number that I could divide all of them by, whereas 6, 8, 10 they can all be divided by 2 to turn it into the primitive. Other famous Pythagorean triples are 5, 12, 13, 8, 15, 17, 7, 24, 25, and 20, 21, 29. If you take any of these numbers, any of these triples, and you test it out, and you do, for instance, 5 squared plus 12 squared, 25 plus 144 is 169, which does equal 13 squared. And this is true for all these Pythagorean triples. Now, if I go back to Plimpton 322, well, there's no triple here, but there's a 119 and a 169. That was these two numbers. Well, those two numbers turn out to be part of a Pythagorean triple because if I take uh, 169 squared and subtract 119 squared, I actually end up with 120 squared. And this sort of translation of it, they kind of figure out what the third number of the Pythagorean triple is. And over here with the 4575, if I take 75 squared 
I subtract 45 squared, I get 60 squared. So 45, 60, 75 is Pythagorean triple, but if I divide them all by 15, it becomes the famous 3, 4, 5 Pythagorean triple. So the mystery of Plimpton 322 is how did they come up with this mysterious 15 pairs, and why are there so many, like there are large numbers and small numbers, and some Pythagorean triples can be reduced, like this one, this common factor in them, in this case of 15, other ones can't be. Well, it has a lot of attention, and like I said, it's the most famous Babylonian mathematical artifact. It's actually uh, located in New York City, in Columbia. It's kind of away in a vault, but every once in a while they take it out and they put it on display in a museum. Here is um, an algorithm that they might have used to create these Plimpton 322 Pythagorean triples. You take, you start with x equals, and x has to be any number that's bigger, uh, make it a fraction that's bigger than 1, for instance, 2 over 1. And what you do with that is to get the values of a and of, to get the value of c, which is the in a Pythagorean triple we usually call the biggest one c. The um, we could just call them a, b, and c this way. Some people like to call b the even number. I'll just make a the smallest, b the middle one, c is the biggest. So to get c, sorry, we're going to calculate out x plus 1 over x over 2 and we're going to calculate out x minus 1 over x over 2 and we're going to do this not as decimals but with fractions so 2 plus 1 half over 2 is 5 over 2 over 2 which is 5 over 4 and for this one on the right it's 2 minus 1 half over 2, which is 3 halves, over 2, which is 3 fourths. And if you do this process, you'll end up with two fractions, and they both have the same denominator. Well, so there's really only three different numbers, because the denominators are the same, and the two numerators are the other two numbers. So the bigger numerator will be C. The in this case, 3 is the smallest, so I'll put it there, and the denominator ends up being in the middle. So that creates the 3, 4, 5 Pythagorean triple. If I try with a different number, like let's say 5 over 2. So the rule is, like I have over here, x plus x plus 1 over x over 2, which is 5 over 2. 1 over 5 over 2 is 2 fifths. Now, common denominator is going to be 10. So I get 25 over 10 plus 4 over 10 over 2 becomes 29 over 10 over 2 becomes 29 over 20. And then I also do x minus 1 over x over 2, which is basically this, except it's got a minus sign in between. So it's 25 over 10 minus 4 over 10 over 2, which is 21 over 10 over 2, which is 21 over 20. And if I put these numbers in order, I get 20, 21, 29. So you can pick any fraction where the numerator is bigger than the denominator, and this process will create a Pythagorean triple. And you'll be given, like a, tell, you'll be told, like starting with this x value, find the Pythagorean triple. Now you might wonder, why does this process work? Well, it works 
One of the most important identities in math is that a plus b squared is a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. And while I'm at it, that a minus b squared is a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. You could do this uh, a lot of different ways, like the a plus b squared. You could make a picture that kind of illustrates it. Here's a squared, b squared. Here's ab, ab. A minus b is a little trickier to make a picture for, but it's almost the same form as it says a minus here and a minus there. Well, if I do x plus 1 over x over 2 squared, I'll get 4 in the denominator. And if this, is, this x is kind of like a, and the 1 over x is kind of like b, so I've got x squared plus 2ab, but a times b is just going to be 1, because x times 1 over x, the x's cancel out. So I end up with 2 plus 1 over x squared. On the other hand, x minus 1 over x squared, so x minus 1 over x over 2 squared is similar. It's x squared minus 2 plus 1 over x squared over 4. And when you subtract these two things, the x squares and the 1 over x squares kind of cancel out. And we always end up with 4 over 4. This 4 is from the bottom, and the 2, and the 2 become 4 equals 1. So that's why <clears throat> 1 is a perfect square. And um, this x plus 1 over x squared squared. So basically we end up with the Pythagorean triple x plus 1 over x over 2 squared 1 is this is this this one c and when I subtract I'll call this I'll call it a although it might end up being b depends which one's bigger when you subtract them you get b when you, when you square them and subtract them, you get b squared, which is 1. So our Pythagorean triple. But that's a Pythagorean triple that has fractions in it, like 5 over 2, sorry, 5 over 4, 1, 3 over 4. But if I multiply a Pythagorean triple by all the numbers by the same thing, I'll get another Pythagorean triple. Now, this one's not integers, but when I multiply by 4, I get 5, 4, 3. Uh, so, to summarize, x plus 1, sorry, x plus 1 over x over 2 squared minus x minus 1 over x over 2 squared will always equal 1, which is also 1 squared, no matter what you put in for x. Although, do, do put something um, bigger than 1 for x, otherwise this x minus 1 over x uh, will be negative. So for any value bigger than 1, this is true. And that also means if I were to just add this thing to both sides, It would be 1 squared plus and see how that has the form of Pythagorean triple? Something squared plus something else squared equals a third thing squared. Um, the problem is these numbers are not all integers, but these two things will have the same denominator at the end. It's not necessarily going to be 2 because this x minus 1 over x might have a denominator. Um, and when I end up multiplying by that denominator, all three of these things, this one turns into that denominator, and um, it's all done. So what you should be able to do, though, is you should be able to follow through this process. Uh, if you're given an x value, you should be able to come up with the three values. It's also good to know that this is all inspired by the famous Plimpton 322 tablet.